Good morning, Mikael. Morning. Has the pain gone away yet from Wednesday night? Having watched the match again, what's your further analysis? It's still always there. I think uh, every time you have a defeat, it takes a few days to get it over. But uh, the full focus now is on on Newcastle. It's obviously things that we had to do much better in, in the game, especially the way we compete, the way we conceded the goals. I don't think that the, the scoreline reflects what happened in the game at all. Um, but uh, but we should have done much better. Did you learn much about the depth of your squad in that match? No, you learn about uh, that every game it's is very really different to the previous one, and uh, and you have to be at it. And you take the, the foot out of the gas in any action in this league against this type of opponent, you get punished. And it's as simple as that. So you have to keep the standards at the maximum level if you want to keep winning and winning. In terms of team news, are you able to welcome back any players who? haven't been available over the last few weeks? We have another training session, so there is a possibility, but uh, I don't know. In terms of Emil Smith-Rowe, have you got any further details on his injury? Nothing has changed. As I said, I think uh, he will be out for weeks. Um, how many would determine, obviously, in relation to how he progressed the first few weeks, especially. And uh, yeah, big blow because he was getting some momentum and, and some minutes and, and we were starting to get the meal that we needed, but uh, unfortunately it's going to be out again. And Martin Odegaard's playing time has been managed over the last two matches. How much has that benefited him and will he be in a position to potentially start tomorrow? Yeah, we have tried to offload him a little bit because he had uh, a little issue that he was grumbling with. Uh, he felt much better in the last few days. We gave him a few minutes against uh, West Ham, which was good to see and his contribution was really good. And, um, and he will train today and if he's fine, um, he will be ready. And finally for me, the West Ham defeat was just your second loss of the season, unbeaten still in the Premier League and a chance to go top tomorrow if you're victorious. How do you reflect on the start of the season? That is very early that we have to go game by game, that we are in a really good position uh, and we have to continue to be there. Tomorrow we have a really tough match against uh, Newcastle, but these are the games that you have to play when you want to be at the top. Thanks James, we'll go to Anita from the Premier League. Morning, Mikhail. Hi. I understand that you obviously want to focus on the game coming up, but I just have one question relating to the performance uh, against West Ham. How concerned are you that the standards that you speak of and the quality that Arsenal fans have become used to seeing their team play with dropped so much then? Well, it dropped especially in one phase in the second half. And, um, and when that happened, then you have to compete in a different way to try to recover the, um, the momentum in the game and we didn't do that well enough. We know the standards and we know that the way we play, especially the second half like the other day, is not good enough. And then in terms of Newcastle tomorrow, they're unbeaten since their loss to, to Brighton. St James's Park has become a, for, uh, a fortress of late. And how, how much of a test are you expecting? A big one. One of the toughest places to go and, 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 and win. We've done it. Um, it's nothing new to it. We know what we expect. Very, very clear what they do, what the strengths are, where the opportunities are as well for us. And we will try to, to take the game where we want. And are you seeing a confident squad that can recover from that game and go ahead and, as we just heard, potentially... And this is football. Right? The next game is the next game. The next day you have to be focused and our full focus energy is now beating Newcastle. That's it. Thank you. That's it. Ian from TalkSport. Hi, Rick. How are you? Well? Hi. Yeah. Um, what do you make of the job that Eddie Howe has done? Because I think when Newcastle had taken over and became the richest club in the world, a lot of people wondered whether or not he would be able to take them to the next level. Huge credit to him. I think he has transformed the club, the environment, the atmosphere, what he has created um, in the team as well, such a belief in, in what they do, and that's a, a huge compliment to him for what they've done. Do you think you've both, in a way, done similar jobs with the clubs you're at? I don't know. Every club is different. I have huge credit for what he's done, the way he's done it, the way his team plays, the environment that he has created um, is fantastic. And uh, and yeah, he had a lot of support, which we all needed as well. And um, and they are now big contenders. You were talking about how the standards maybe dropped a little bit at West Ham the other night. Can I ask you a question I asked you a month ago and you said no, so you probably say no again. Uh, are you concerned about the form of Kai Havertz? Because Amongst a lot of players, I think. No, and I'm not going to put any individual as you expect. You know, we are a team and we play for the best is the team. When we don't, I am the maximum responsible for that. And uh, and we all need to try to improve every single day. That's the, 
Finally, a player you've been linked with, I'm not necessarily saying you're, you're going to buy him or you're even interested in him, is Ivan Tony. This week, Brentford apparently put a £100 million price tag on him if someone wants to buy him in January. Um, it's more about that, really. You spent £100 million on a player in the summer. Chelsea spent £100 million twice on a player. It now seems that we've gone from being 20, 30, 40 million is quite a lot to spend on a player to nearly every player is now worth 100 million pounds. As a manager and someone who's been involved in football a long time, do you find that a little bit crazy? Well, I think there's been an evolution. I think we've gone from the 10s to the 20s to the 80s to the 100. There have been players that cost 220 million as well, you know. So it's not that we are getting used to it, but. Uh, but yeah, it's something that is happening, it's happening more and more often. Uh, but yeah, and about all the players, all the clubs, what we are doing, is no comment on that. Is, is that something a manager thinks about, the price tag, how much it costs to buy the player before they buy them? No, first of all, is what can we do to improve our team and then can we afford it? And does it make sense uh, in, in our in, in our project to, to spend certain money in certain players? And uh, there is a lot of work to be done there. Mark, press association. Um, ben White will make his 100th appearance for Arsenal if he plays tomorrow, I assume he will. Um, can you just talk about his evolution from someone who struggled on his debut to someone who's now probably one of your most key players? Yeah, I think um, I think he's progressed in the right way in the last few years. Um, as you said, he had a, a little bit of a difficult start, which is normal because it was a big jump. Different expectations start to play as well in certain different positions, but I think he showed uh, a lot of determination and, and courage to overcome any of that. I think he has a big personality. I think he goes with pressure really well. He has a lot of quality, gives us different positions, and uh, and he's been a key player for us. A lot of your key players over the last year have signed new deals. Is, is Ben, in your opinion, the next one off the rank in that, in that regard as well? Is he close to any deal? Yeah, we are always trying to keep the squad in a healthy position in, in any way and um, and the club and, and it was especially are working on that. It's, it's a bit of a strange character Ben in the sense that whenever we talk to him he talks about how he doesn't particularly even like football, he doesn't really watch football but hey, is, it, is it important to have different characters around around the training ground? Yeah and he's a really good character <laughs> on his own way and, and the way he is, the way he presents himself but he loves football. Eh? The way, if not, you don't play that amount of game. The way he trains every day, the way he applies himself, um, is top, and uh, and we need players like him. Jordan from Athletic. Michael, just on um, Gabby Jesus on his injury, do you know if he's going to definitely be back after the international break? I cannot guarantee that. We are trying to um, to get a recovery as quick as possible. I said that it will be weeks, uh, but very difficult to put a time frame still right now. When you're planning your squad, he's obviously such an important player. How disruptive is this that you know that's the maybe third or fourth injury that he's had in the last year? His football is what happens. He hasn't had a lot of muscle injuries. It's true that the load that he had in the last few weeks um, to what he's done in the past, even when he was at City, has been very, very different. And uh, and he's still adapting to it. Uh, yeah, we lost four big players in the last few weeks, but it's the challenges that you have throughout the season. For Eddie, I mean, at the weekend, this could be his 100th Premier League start. You know, does the, the fact that he's played eight or ten games in the league so far and that he's got such a big role in the squad, does that vindicate his decision to stay and fight rather than go somewhere else where he was guaranteed playing? Yes, but I think he has earned that that right, and um, and yeah, we tried to explain him what his role was in the team, and uh, and then the opportunities that he was going to have, like any other player, in relation to his performances and the fact that he's played that many games is for for his own performances and the reason he's given us to trust him. Okay, Tom Cooper, London. Hi, Mikel. Uh, before you arrived at Arsenal, the records away from home, yeah, there were some issues with it, but you really addressed that, especially against big teams and tough places to go. You've seen a win in Seville this season, and last season you won at Newcastle as well. What Can you pinpoint as to the reason why that's changed so dramatically under your tenure? Well, first of all, believe, and then performances. You need to, first of all, be so convinced that you go to Martin Newcastle and, and you fully believe that you're going to win the game. And what it has to be really clear what we have to do in order to achieve that. And then obviously quality and talent to get the performances that, that we need and that's down to the players. 
I asked you before the game against West Ham about the midfield and the experience in it. Um, Granit Xhaka is doing really well in Germany by the way. I'm curious as to your thoughts on how the midfield's evolved since he's left and how the new players coming in have changed things for you. Yeah, Granit was a key player. He played almost every game for us and, um, and we knew that uh, he was going to take some time, like he did take him some time, especially when I changed his role. And um, and there were a lot of questions about it. And and then he evolved in a great way. And um, and here it will happen the same. Good, Aaron from Marvel. Hi, just aside from that, the Under-17 World Cup squad was announced yesterday. It features two Hellenders. Is that testament to all the hard work done by your staff, by all your team, to have two players so talented in it? Yeah. Big compliment um, to the club, to everybody in the academy that... Uh, has raised the boys, they looked really excited. It's going to be an incredible experience for them, so wish them all the best. Thank you. Okay, that finishes the live. Oh, sorry, sorry, Simon. Um, Mikhail, Saint, um, with St. James's Park, obviously the atmosphere has been massively changed under Eddie Howe. Just what were your memories of it last season? How much did you take from the way the squad sort of coped with it and got a result? <coughs> when you play football, you want to play in those atmospheres, like going to Seville. You know what you're going to get. It's, it's an incredible privilege to play in those grounds and uh, and you have to embrace the moment and, and enjoy it and go for it because it's, it's worth it. This is the arena that you want to be tested in. I mean, when you spoke about Anfield before, you described it as a jungle. How would you describe going to St. James's Park? An incredible football atmosphere. And just on the title race, lastly, this is the first time in, in Premier League history we've got three teams with tw at least 24 points. How competitive, how many teams do you feel could be in this title race this season compared to years gone by? What has happened in the last five years in this league, something unprecedented, it never happened with the amount of points, with the level of the teams. Now is the amount of teams with that level that is increasing and increasing. That's why comparing to the past, this league is, for me, is, is a waste of time. It's very different to what it used to be, and that puts the demands of what we do every single day in a different scale. Spurs at the top of that. Are they a team you view as a title rival this season? Well, they are right now there, and they merit to be where they are, so yes.